1077 The Pulse, good afternoon. It is Kale and Company, great to have you along with us. We're going to talk about a very important topic on uh, this segment of Kale and Company with our health coach, Carol Phillips. Carol, how are you today? I am awesome. How are you, Ken? It is a delight to have you with us uh, here in the holiday season. Yes. And uh, don't forget about uh, Carol's double award-winning book, double award-winning book, 52 Simple Ways to Health, and uh, it's still available, right? On Amazon. Okay, there Paperback you go. Paperback and ebook and audiobook. It would make uh, a wonderful Christmas gift. Or maybe even a belated Christmas gift. Who knows? And great for the New Year's. That's right. And yes. Absolutely. You for, know, just you know, read one chapter a week. Yes. That's all you have to do. Yes. Forget the unrealistic New Year's resolutions. Throw those right out the window and buy the book. Each chapter you can read in three to four minutes. Yep. And you can just read the whole thing in one sitting. Or you can do a chapter a week for the year and your life will change enormously. Three to four minute chapters are my kind of chapters. I'll tell you that. Uh, so uh, get get the book if you don't have it already. And uh, it's it's Carol Phillips and uh, available on Amazon. And uh, Carol has brought along a special guest today. But uh, anything that you uh, need to tell us? What have you What have you been up to? Oh, just busy, fun, fun. A lot of wellness presentations. A lot of corporate work but also um, a lot of CPR and first aid classes. So health professionals out there, if you're looking for your BLS, we're at Manchester Community College every Tuesday evening, except uh, the next couple of weeks for the holidays. Uh, and January is going to be a little different because we will be there Tuesday, January 7th. The following week is going to be Monday night instead of Tuesday, just one little change. And then we'll be back to the every Tuesday evening. So if you need your uh, basic life support, CPR, AED, come join us. You can sign up for the class at our website. Go to askcoachcarol.com, which will bring you to my health design website, and you can click on CPR, and it'll bring you right to uh, the registration page. So you can go directly there and come join us. We have fun. Outstanding. And uh, as I mentioned, we are going to talk about a very uh, important topic today. And uh, Coach Carroll, why don't you uh, introduce our special guest? Well, I thought today would be a great day to talk about volunteering. You know, I just, I love talking about kindness and paying it forward and giving back, especially this time of year. We need to just stop thinking about everything that's going on in our lives and what we're stressing about and give to others. It's a great time of year to talk about being kind and volunteer work. And my good friend is here with us today who is all about kindness and giving back and promoting volunteer work. Um, so Steve Gamlin is a speaker, author, and learning program creator known as the Motivational Firewood Guy. He's a firm believer that giving and volunteering are the key to growing as a business and a human being. So welcome, Steve. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. You forgot one thing. Radio guy, too. Oh, and yes. you could tell just by the first few words out of his mouth. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Former radio guy. Yeah. Oh, a oh, long once, history Once a radio, radio guy, always a radio guy. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's that little thing that's wrong in my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the FM gene that just keeps there you go. following me forever. You know, since we only have an hour, probably... It, talking about what Steve hasn't done yet would probably be easier, yeah, as opposed to the long list of true. things that I mean, he, he has he, done. He built a deck on my house once. Oh, dear. Yeah. DJ extraordinaire. <laughs> really, seriously. It's a small world. It really is. And you is. guys have that, that connection. Yeah. So, um, Pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And so before I let you jump in, Steve, mm -hmm. um, uh, if our listeners want to reach out to Steve, you can reach out to him through his website at motivationalfirewood.com or call him directly at 877-560-3360. Um, Steve, um, I would love to hear more about how you became the motivational firewood guy. <laughs> I was, uh, even prior to my radio career, which is from 1992 to 2002, I had uh, a friend in my life who kept after me, why didn't you ever follow your dream of being on the radio? And at the time, I was broke and depressed, living on my grandfather's couch, making no money at all. I mean, it's just 24 years old and was just a mess and stuck. And finally, I just thought, well, I have nothing else going on. So I borrowed $4,000 from my grandfather and went to broadcast school, got an internship at a radio station I'd grown up listening to, drove to my friend's house and said, hey, hey, 
you know, I got an internship. He said, where, where? I said, WCGY, an old radio station. And he was so happy and he was so proud. And he actually passed away three weeks after that. Wow. And I had 10 wonderful years in radio. And then at the end of that, I was very burned out. And I decided to make changes in my life. And I became a speaker, became a comedian. And as a speaker, the lesson that my friend had given me really set the tone for what I wanted to be. When you have somebody in your life who believes in you and you don't believe in yourself, listen to these other people. I mean, if they have your best interest in mind, right. of course. Like, I don't think you'll jump off that bridge. <laughs> you don't do that. But people who, who see your dream and see something golden in you and see a fire in you, but you don't necessarily know what to put, add to that spark to create fire. Right. And I said, as a speaker, as an author, as a radio show host, as a video creator, I want to be the person that adds ideas and potential action. That if somebody says, I want to do this, I want to give them some fuel to add to that fire to believe that they can do it. So I want to mm -hmm. be to them what my friend Danny was to me. And I, I actually told that to a speaker one time and he says, do you know anything about trademarks? And I said, no. He said, trademark that now because <laughs> the concept is is interesting. Right, right. So, so you were ready to pay it forward right I was, away. I was ready to pay it forward since, mm -hmm. since my very first speech, which was horrible, in a nearly empty room 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gotten better. <laughs> 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 but that's you know just it. I can't tell you how to change your life, but I can give you ideas and content. And if you grab something, add it to the spark in your heart and take action, we both win. Right, and right. Great... And I think that's that's your nature anyways. Your nature is... I hope so. You know, you look through the, the lens of kindness and how, you know, what can I do for somebody else? And it is so simple, isn't it? It is it so is. simple. And I read a book once where this person was on a mission to do an act of kindness, a small act of kindness every day for 21 days or whatever it was. I can't remember exactly. But I'm reading this book and they're like looking, each day they're looking to find something for this, to do for this book. Mm. And then toward the end they said, well, I, I'd like to continue this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. And that didn't make sense to me because right. if you just have that mindset of, I'm just going to keep my eyes open to the world around me and notice who needs help. Yeah, exactly. You know, even, like something as simple as an old person struggling to cross the street. You know, you just take two seconds and you stop and you, mm -hmm. you help them. Or somebody drops something and they're juggling things and you just, you know, it, you know, just if you adopt it as, well, that's just going to be my mentality. Right. Um, so you are so much about that, which is wonderful. And I, you know, the, this, this is a great time of year to really focus on, you know, giving to others and not just what what are we going to get this year mm. um i'd also love to talk to you about your work with liberty house because one thing that you do you're you're very present on social media yes so first before i jump into this feel free to share your social media pages if people want to find you sure you can find me uh steve gamlin of course g-a-m-l-i-n is my personal page and also have steve gamlin the motivational firewood guy is my speaker page. And we also have the fun page. It's called Beach Bum Philanthropy because mm -hmm. that's the name we've given to our little acts of kindness mission because none of us want credit for any of the things we're doing. And when people come up and say, oh, I want to do an act of kindness in your name, I say, don't use my name. Just say, hi, I'm one of the Beach Bums mm -hmm. and go from there. Right. So those Absolutely. three pages are on Facebook. Terrific. Which is a great place to find Terrific. us. Terrific. And so you... You post things and you promote Liberty House. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about Liberty House and how people can help them. Mm -hmm. Liberty House is a small nonprofit. It's one of the ones I like to refer to as the, the little nonprofit that could and <laughs> does. Mm -hmm. uh, th what they do is the people they help are homeless veterans and in need veterans who are kind of getting their lives back on track and back together after their service because so many people struggle when they leave the service and try to get back into regular society and jobs and pressures and everything. And so what they do is they can have up to 10 residents at any time with them on site. They're an alcohol and drug free um, nonprofit. And they also have a lot of people that come in throughout the day, throughout the week, maybe needing supplies, whether it be food or some clothing or sleeping bag or something, because there's so many people out there, and especially at the time we're doing the show, it's the winter. And so many people are struggling right now. So Liberty House is one of those little beacons, these little shining lights, whom we love to support. And nothing against the big nonprofits, but I like these boots on the street 
right. uh, smaller local nonprofits because they're making a difference. Somebody can walk in and walk out with the donation on their back that you just brought in five minutes before. Right. And they have they have a small visual presence in Manchester, but they make a huge impact they do. for veterans. So they are located at 75 West Baker Street in Manchester, and their phone number is 603-669-0761. Um, and you can stop by there and, and drop off donations. So mm-hmm. non-perishable food is always appreciated, and clothing and socks and shoes and boots, etc. Yes. I was just there the other day and they said, we need to hold off on the clothing donations for a couple of weeks because okay. of course this time of the year, they are bursting at the seams with donations. Oh, and good. the reason I bring that up and say that is because uh, if you remember the singer Harry Chapin, yes. Cats in the Cradle, yes, he used to do so many benefits throughout the year. He did over a hundred benefit shows every single year for mm. free for local uh, charities, nonprofits and, and food banks. And I remember a recording where he was talking about the principal of a middle school getting on the intercom after the week after Thanksgiving. And he said, students, I want to thank you and all your families and all your friends. Due to your generosity, we were able to help 47 local families last week for Thanksgiving. And that is wonderful. But I've got a question for you. What are those people going to eat next week? Right. And I love that because I want people to remember that giving happens year round. And places like Liberty House and the Food Bank and all of these other nonprofits, they need help all year round. So while it's wonderful to give at the holidays, if they're full, if you got a little bit of room in your house, I mean, you've had it there sitting for years anyway, hang on to it for a couple of weeks and give them a call and say, hey, do you need this yet? That's a great idea. That way it just keeps going and it allows them to help more people longer. Right. Great. And you're you're really good at, at you know, posting on Facebook and social media what they're current needs are, what they're currently looking for. Yes. So be on the lookout for um, Steve's social media pages for that information. I'm there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't even say borderline addiction because I've crossed that border. Yes. And yeah, my... Well, they're front of mind with you a lot. It's obvious. Yeah. Which is really terrific. Yeah. Um, all right. So now um, tell us a little bit about Beach Bum, beach bum Philanthropy. Yes. Uh, we named it... Uh, my family and I wanted to, right around... 2012, we we started this desire to try to commit an act of kindness every day, even the smallest thing each day, to always keep that top of mind awareness and to see opportunities. And somebody said, well, what do you want to call it? What do you mean, what do you want to call it? (laughs) Well, if you ever want to become a nonprofit, you're going to have to give it a name and register (laughs) with the state and all that. Like, I don't know. And some people were throwing out these big flowery, you know, benevolent acts of kindness, ah, this long thing. And I said, no, nah, that's not going to work. And they said, well, what's your what's your goal in life? And it took about a half second to say beach bum because I just <laughs> learned There's how to goal. surf. <laughs> I just learned how to surf, and I said beach bum because just I should have been born a hippie because I'm so laid back with everything. And mm-hmm. I said beach bum. And then I thought, well, what's the word for giving? Philanthropy. So literally it just those two words, beach bum philanthropy, I love just it. came together. And part of the reason, too, is like I said earlier, we don't want our names – on this. And occasionally people say, oh, we'd like to name you the volunteers of the year. Come and get a certificate. I'm like, please tell me my name is not on it. I'll accept it on behalf of the beach bombs, but I will not go if my name is on it. So it became a nice front for, um, you know, everything going on in the community. And the beautiful part about that is anyone can be a beach bomb. Right. Uh, people I, I know all of a car be. full. I think we all should. It's a great yes. mentality to have. It's just, yes. it's laid back. Waves are crashing. You're just there. I mean, who doesn't love the beach? Come on. Yes. And we're, you know, we're social beings. We're all connected to mm-hmm. each other and we all need to help each other out. And I think we can do a better job in our country of mm-hmm. all of us looking through the lens of, okay, who needs me right now? I know that I've heard so many people and just recently it's the topics come up a couple times is we just don't know our neighbors like we used to, right? which is terrible because I remember years ago where it was nothing to call your next door neighbor, which you knew their number off the top of your head mm-hmm. and say, hey, I'm making a cake and I forgot to pick up the eggs. Yeah. Well, how many do you need? Come on over. That yeah. was just commonplace. Yeah. Just shouting know? over the fence. And the kids played with yep. each other. And yeah. now people are saying, you know, I don't even know my neighbors. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not good because we need to be looking out for each other. Right. And you know, when we don't know each other, 
if something's wrong next door, our brain says, oh, is something wrong? I don't know. Well, it's not my business anyways. Whereas if you know them, and years ago when I was young, we lived in Connecticut, and we used to go to Hampton Beach two weeks every summer. Mm -hmm. And this is way before, you know, the, the cottages at Hampton Beach didn't have phones. There was no cell phones. And one day we got home from the beach, and the police came to the cottage and knocked on the door and said, you know, are you the, you know, they named, you know, my maiden name, gave my maiden name. And my parents said, yes, why? And they said, somebody was trying to break into your house in Connecticut and your neighbor stopped them and called the police and is on a mission to find you. They knew we had gone to Hampton Beach. So they knew we weren't home. They knew to step in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just everybody just watching out for each other. Yeah. And the little things are the big things, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not always saving a house from being robbed, but uh, just, you know, all of us being connected and helping each other out. Yeah. That's so true. It's so true. People don't know their neighbors these days. Even if you live in an apartment, people <laughs> live three feet away. Exactly. You, sometimes you don't know them. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it, it's a great conversation to have today, especially at this uh, time of the year. Steve Gamlin is here. He is the motivational firewood guy. And uh, check out uh, on Facebook, Beach Bum Philanthropy. You ever met Kurt Gowdy? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah? I used to, uh, I worked at at Kurt Gowdy's radio station near Boston for the final two years that he owned it. And there were several times that I had to engineer recording sessions for him. Ah. And he would sit there and look at the script. He'd mumble, 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 mumble. You ready, young man? Yep. And then that voice would come out of him, <laughs> the legendary Kurt Gowdy voice. And yeah. I used to just sit there in awe. <laughs> you and, would have uh, to. Anybody would have to. Yes. You know? And my favorite but, Kurt Gowdy memory is one day his uh, he was down at his son's house in the Andover area, yeah. and his back was very sore. So his son said, I'm going to get a car for my dad to drive him back up through Franconia Notch. Would you mind driving his car? And following them. It just happened to be about an 85 Jaguar. <laughs> and Mrs. Gowdy left the keys in the ignition and drained the battery. When they jump started, it blew out half the electrical system. Oh, boy. So I got to drive Kurt Gowdy's Jag 85 to 90 miles an hour with no headlights, chasing a limousine <laughs> all the way through Franconia Notch <laughs> from Massachusetts. And that's what, that what was a, always my favorite Mr. Gowdy story. What a great story. <laughs> And you guys didn't plan this ahead of time. The, the, the man who introduced, introduced all of us to Narragansett Lager Beer, <laughs> yes. uh, Kurt Gowdy. Yep. Uh, but uh, Steve Gamblin is here, and uh, great to have you with us. And Coach Carol Phillips, who is here uh, every other week. Yeah, we, we hope she's here every other week anyway. We, we count on you, Coach Carol. But we'll uh, take a break. One twenty four is our time. And if you'd like to call in uh, and join the conversation, 866-823-1077, and because I, I think there are people out there who probably know of some uh, volunteering opportunities out there that they might like to share. If you know of an organization that might be in need of, of volunteers, why don't you give us a call? This would be the time to do it. Uh, 866-823-1077. We're talking about the importance of uh, volunteerism. And, uh, of course, Steve has done a lot of it, although he doesn't like to brag about it, but uh, he has. And uh, Liberty House is uh, one of those places in Manchester. And uh, we'll return right after these words. Kale and Company, 1077 The Pulse. 1077 The Pulse, Kale and Company. Great to have you along with us during this holiday season, the uh, season for giving. And uh, Coach Carol Phillips is in the house along with Steve Gamblin, the motivational firewood guy who has uh, a great uh, space on Facebook, a page called uh, Beach Bum Philanthropy. And uh, you will, uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, if you uh, log on to it for the first time today, you will enjoy it and get a lot out of it. And, uh, and I think we're going to talk about uh, something that's on that page uh, right now, Coach Carroll. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, for those of you who are thinking about volunteering and you say, oh, you know what, I don't have time, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It doesn't have to be this big formal thing that you do. But one of the things I suggest to people is think about things that you love to do. You know, like if you love animals, maybe volunteer at an animal shelter. Um, Or, you know, if if there's a hobby that you have. So find something that you love. And, you know, what's great about volunteering is when you're volunteering, you're 
thinking about other people. You're out of your own head. You're not thinking about your problems. You're not stressing about things. It's and it's helping your health. It's reducing your blood pressure. Um, you know, and it just you know it has all these benefits that are positive to your brain. So think about what you can be doing in the new year. So, um, Steve, I want to talk about your rock star giver of the day, which is just. It's awesome because it really highlights people who are doing good work in the community. Yeah, it's something we like to do uh, as often as possible. And it's starting to become every single day (laughs) on the Beach Bum Philanthropy page on Facebook. I've even got people who tag me on social media. Steve Gamlin, this is one of your rock stars. (laughs) What we try to do is we just find regular everyday people who are doing great things things. And so often people don't think that they can make a difference. Well, just so happens that the one we shared today, which a friend L'Oreal shared with us, is a seven-year-old boy who has helped to save and rescue 1,300 dogs and 45 cats that were probably going to be euthanized, that were at shelters for so long. And older pets are often unadoptable. And that those are the ones that he tries to help the most. He and his mom, his mom's name is Sully, and he's seven years old. And he just got an award for being the kid of the year for this particular nonprofit, rescuing and helping animals to become more adoptable. And he gets on camera with these animals and plays with them, talks to them, and lets the world see how cute they are. That's awesome. And and he just got recognized for that. This is a seven-year-old kid. And if this kid with a heart of gold like that can make that much of a difference, what could each of us do? And it could even be calling your local shelter and saying, what do you need? I mean, there's, there's exactly. one over in New Boston called Canine Commitment. We actually bring bags of newspapers Instead of recycling, we save up a few bags. We bring them over there. And I once created a, a what I thought would be a great marketing piece, but they said, we love it, but no. I said, wouldn't you rather, instead of recycling, recycling is wonderful, but wouldn't you rather think of an adoptable pet doing its business on the face of someone in the news that you don't like? <laughs> 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 yes. Look at that. Buster just did his business on the face of someone I don't care for. That's and they said, you know, we love it. And it's funny, but we can't use that. I mean, our sponsors would be very upset. But, but how simple it is to just even holding newspapers aside in a yes. bag and yeah. dropping them at a shop. Right. Cost you nothing. You've already read them. Right. And if it's a place you're driving by anyways. Right. Exactly. And most nonprofits, if you go to their website, they will have a page that yes. will say, you know, what they need. Yes. You know, I know the um, the animal shelters do. You can easily go to the website. They have a page and it says exactly what they need. Mm-hmm. And, you know, while you're at the grocery store, even if you just while you're shopping, grab an extra can of cat food mm-hmm. um, and some grocery stores, you know, some, you know, the places we go all the time. And we don't see things that are right in front of us, but then once it gets pointed out, then we see it all the time. Right. Like when people come and they take CPR, afterwards for a week they notice where every AED is in a building mm. and that they didn't notice before. <laughs> um, but like in the grocery stores, often um, between the checkout and the exit door, there will be donation you know, mm. um, boxes yes. you know, so that you can donate non-perishable food or clothing, et cetera. So be on the lookout for those. Yeah, and I encourage people often too, if you get a buy one, get one, or my wife shops a lot. And hopefully, (laughs) honey, if you're listening, I love you and I love (laughs) that you're an amazing shopper. She gets, she has rewards programs everywhere, whether it be Big Lots or Kohl's or all of these things. She had about $90 worth of Kohl's cash recently built up. And she had to use it by a certain date because it expires. So we went online. We wound up buying two brand new pairs of boots for Liberty House. Nice. Just using Kohl's cash and discounts. And I think it cost us you know, $20, $30. But it was over $160 worth of boots because of all the coupons and saving. She's just so smart with the shopping. So rather than just saying, well, we don't need anything. Let's let those points run out. If you've got points built up, if you have buy one, get one, why not consider taking the one that cost you nothing and donating it and, and taking that value and just paying it forward somewhere? Just call a, a local shelter and say, hi, I've got X amount of money. What do you need? Right. And you might be amazed at how simple it really is. Right. Or the places where when they're giving you your change and they have a little change jar mm. of, you know, the local food bank, you know, mm-hmm. um, I was just somewhere today where they had a a little jar for the food bank. And so I threw my change in there. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, it adds up. You might think, well, you know, that's not much, but 
it really adds up and it makes a huge difference. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and just feeling good about giving to others. Yeah. I tell people often, I said, you probably have more, enough change under the floor mats in your car to buy a can of tuna fish. And that can of tuna fish, as insignificant as it might seem, might be the only meal a homeless person has all day. Right. Absolutely. That is a feast to them. 85 cents. Uh, Several years ago when, you remember when Powerball hit? A billion dollars, January sure. 2016. Yeah, yeah. I saw people on the news, you know, and, and of course there's a young reporter in a lobby somewhere at a, at a store. Hey, if you win, what are you going to do? To a person, everyone says, I'm going to help the, the hungry. I'm going to help the homeless. I'm going to feed the needy. And one guy is, is the only guy I actually respected. He looked right at that camera and he said, hookers and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay. You do get yourself in trouble, yeah. don't you? Right. And, and the young lady news reporter just looked at him and said, sir, we're live. And she looked at the camera and says, back to you. Well, you know what? Actually, I respect that person just for being honest. Because how many other people, everybody in that room lost. They didn't win. How many people still did what they said they were going to do? And so I went home that day, and it took five minutes. I created a meme that said, you don't have to be rich to make a difference. A uh, dollar seventy nine, you can buy a loaf of bread. Eighty five cents for a can of tuna fish. Granola bars are cheap. Mm-hmm, right. A pair of gloves could save a life, and I bet you own a coat that you don't wear. And I put it on Facebook because I was just frustrated by people saying it. When I win, when I have a lot of money, I'll make a difference. It's in eleven days, it reached four point one million people on social media. It wow. was shared fifty three wow. and a half thousand times. Mm. It is my most viral thing ever. And of course, I don't benefit from that financially, but I benefit from the fact that a lot of people sent me messages saying, wow, I never realized how easy it was to give. Yeah. So that mindset of just thinking, think small. Well, I think sometimes it's because we see on the news people who've given huge amounts, Mm -hmm. you know, people who have money to burn and they've given huge amounts. And so sometimes it leaves... A lot of people thinking, oh, well, what could I do? I can't afford that. You know, I have trouble making ends meet myself. But every little thing counts. And it doesn't have to be monetary. No. It can be just a little bit of your time or Mm -hmm. just being on the lookout when you're out and about. Who can I help right now? Yeah. My dad had a pair of boots that sat in his garage for a year. And he had spilled a gallon of paint in the garage and they splashed all over the boots. So it was that nice suede Timberland with bright blue all over them. (laughs) And they sat in his garage for for quite a while. And one day I said, well, I'm going to take those to Liberty House. He goes, well, I guess I I feel bad. They're ruined. And I looked at the bottoms of them. I mean, they were maybe a month old. They they still had full tread on them. And I said, you know what, bud? That's what I always called my dad. (laughs) He passed last year. I said, you know what, bud? I said, you know the, the... Homeless veteran living in the woods in the middle of winter at 2 o'clock, freezing in the month of February, doesn't care if there's paint on those boots. And he says, well, okay. I mean, he just he didn't want to give something to somebody that he felt was ruined. Right. And that week I called Liberty House and I said, do you have anyone in there who needs a specific size of boot? And they said, we had somebody in today who was wearing sneakers that were just in tatters. I mean, just ripped, wow. and he's still wearing them in the middle of winter. I said, what size? Because it's that or nothing, right? It's that or nothing. Yeah. I mean, homeless people, their clothing takes a beating. Mm-hmm. And they said, he's a size 11. I said, I got an 11 and a half. Give him an extra pair of socks. <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and if you can, have him there. And they sent me a message, said he was there. I drove there with those boots under the heater in my car. It was about 110 degrees in my car yeah. <laughs> when I got there. And I ran in, and I said... Are you Dave? He goes, yeah. I go, put these on. He put them on, and he just went, oh, my gosh. He that is boots. the best wow. my feet have felt in a long time. Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? That's and a great story. I just sat there, and I just thought how simple. Yep. You know, my, my dad thought they were trash, but they were treasure to this guy, Dave. Yeah. Right. Because he could walk back to the woods where he was living in the middle of winter with warm feet. And how much do most of us have in our homes that's oh, just yeah. sitting there that we don't need. Right. You know? Exactly. I mean, we've we've gotten humbled so many times. I, I've left there crying before. I get in my car and I got a tear running down because how simple it is. And, and I get educated a lot and schooled a lot. The first thing I ever did for Liberty House is making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches from crusts of bread 
that were left over. It wasn't even the good slices. It was the crust from another nonprofit I was volunteering at. Mm -hmm. And went and got some peanut butter and jelly and with the crusts of bread, made sandwiches on the dashboard of my car. Made a heck of a mess. (laughs) It was, my car, my dashboard was all sticky and crumbs were everywhere. Is that your mobile food truck? Well, it was the worst mobile food truck you've ever heard of. But you know what? They could not have been more gracious Mm -hmm. and appreciative. And these days, uh, between my mother, my stepmom, and myself, and all of the people who provide Hey, Steve, here's a box of granola bars. Hey, Steve, here's a jar of peanut butter. Hey, Steve, here's this, this. Between 1,000 and 1,500 bag lunches a year now, we're making out of our three kitchens and bringing to Liberty House, thanks to so many of the beach bums who keep saying, I, I've got people I've never met from other parts of the country. Hey, Steve, go check your PayPal account, and I'll go in this $50 in there. And we're not even a nonprofit yet. The paperwork is here in the, in the state building somewhere. Mm-hmm. We're waiting for approval. But they'll say, you know what? I love what you're doing and why you're doing it. And we'd rather give to you and nothing against the nonprofits that have a CEO who makes three quarters of a million dollars a year, but we'd rather see it happening on the street. And we know you're going right. to use this. You, We know you're going to be a good steward with this money. And I, I've been in tears in the middle of a grocery store when somebody gave me $20 and said, help the homeless. And I'm finding... The most I can get for that $20, Mm -hmm. I've spent an hour and a half at a grocery store once in tears trying to make that $20 Mm -hmm. help as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And it's it's humbling. Right. It really is when you see what other people have, the decisions other people have to make with the $20 they have that has to last a week. Right. It's it's sad. It is very sad. In a country this rich. It is uh, terrific, and a little goes a long way, doesn't it? I Absolutely. mean, it really does. Yep. And I'm sure most people listening to us have uh, things that they could uh, donate to uh, food pantries, uh, shelters, uh, you know, homeless facilities. It would be uh, amazing to do that if you could. I know I recently went through a move and, and, and donated a, a ton of clothing uh, you know, to a uh, to to Goodwill and uh, and another uh, shop as well, and uh, you know it it gives you. I mean, uh, as as much as it's helping, uh, you know, the people that are going to benefit from those things, like the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and whatever. But I think the the person that feels best about it is you, right? Really, uh, gives you a great feeling know that you're helping uh, so many people yep in it, turn yeah and, and definitely and steve you, you've helped uh, so so many uh, over the years it's an amazing story it really is and don't forget time i mean that's what i have right now and i don't necessarily have you know income to give but i know the time that i've given to this particular organization they're like oh my gosh if you're there at 6 30 a.m to answer the door and answer the phone that means the volunteer coordinator doesn't have to be there at 6.30 a.m. Right. And he can mm. come in and stay till 8 p.m. that night cooking dinner. So your time can be just as valuable yes. or more valuable than money. So don't mm. discount yes. your time. Well, you know what that reminds me yeah. of is I just signed up to be a volunteer for the Animal Rescue League in Bedford. And um, I went to the volunteer orientation and they gave us some great information. And one of the things they told us was that they keep track of all the volunteer hours. And last year, the volunteer hours added up to what would have been nine full-time employees. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That, that's I a do nine full-time yeah. employees. Record keeping for our volunteers that we have at um, Family Promise of Southern New Hampshire. And it's astounding. You wonder... You know, like, well, if you had to pay someone to do this and all their benefits, it would truly add up. Mm. And it's these stalwart souls who, you know, come in in bad weather. If their kids are sick, you know, they find a way to still get there. So, yeah, I get to I get the joy of seeing how many people care about their community every day. And that keeps me going. And if you and a lot of people do. I bet if you ask someone like Steve is very modest. But I bet you ask your neighbor, where do you put your time or have you dropped something off? I hope more people give than that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. Right. They're just very, or they don't even think of it as being giving. Right. But I hope it's more prevalent than than we fear it's not. Mm. Right. Or even just go introduce yourself to your neighbor and swap names and, you know, cell phone numbers and say, hey, if you ever need anything, let me know. 
Oh, I, yeah, I have a neighbor who is suffering with dementia and has reached the point where she leaves her house and wanders. And we have like a little <laughs> committee on our couple of blocks. Like, oh my gosh, go get Mary. Because mm. she's in her house coat walking up the street. And we all hang up the phone and we look out our windows and we look for Mary or we get in our car. And it has saved her a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel good to know that I can call my neighbor and say I'm stuck or I'm sad or... You know, I need a ride to the grocery store or something. And I know they would take me. Right, that's, right. That's like, oh, my, that's a gift. Right. And what's really what's is. different at your neighbors, you know, is yeah. the light on every day at a certain time. And now right. the light's not on, right. you know. And on that topic of, you know, the elderly and dementia, 70% mm -hmm. of people with dementia end up wandering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. so, you know, they, their brain's telling them they need to go to a certain place. But, right. you know. Yeah, and um, to just open your window, and if you happen to see yeah, a person out there, you've got that network. That That yeah, is I mean, such a, yeah. a throwback, the mindset of that. Yes. It's yes. such a throwback it to is. just looking out yeah. for each other. Yes. And yeah, I mean, during the winter, we have neighbors, uh, we, we live on a dead end street off another dead end street, which is great. <laughs> We're out in the woods. And we have a house across the street. There are eight houses total on our street. We have a house across the street and a house right next door. And if I know the husband across the street has left for work for the day and the plow comes by while I'm doing my driveway, I'll do the mailbox in the end of the driveway with the big hump of snow for the people across the street. It takes less than three minutes to do this. Well, at the end of last winter, one day, my wife says it's early in the morning. She goes, what's that noise? I said, oh, it's probably just Dustin doing his driveway. And she goes, the noise is coming from our driveway. <laughs> and I open the shades and there's Dustin doing the bottom of our driveway. Uh, and and mm -hmm. I didn't know we had the day off. And so I bundle up and I go down there. I got bad ha rooster hair sticking out <laughs> everywhere. And I said, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, just returning the favor, neighbor. Oh. And I just, I, awesome. I, at first I felt bad. I'm like, oh, you don't have to do that. And I thought, wait a second. He's just appreciative. Right. And he's just you know, kick it. It's it's like playing volleyball. He's just kicking that ball back over the net, and and the energy just goes back and forth, right. back and forth. And I was so appreciative uh, that he did that, and and it was just great. And it feels good mm -hmm. to be in a neighborhood like that. Right. Na neighbor helping neighbor, ha neighbor yeah. helping neighbor. That's what it's all about, really. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No question about it. Uh, we're we're talking about uh, giving uh, of your time, of your extra clothing, of your uh, money if you can. Uh, but there are so many other ways that you can help uh, as well in uh, so many different organizations. And uh, we're talking about some of those today with Steve Gamblin. You should check out uh, his Facebook page, Beach Bum Philanthropy, and uh, see some of the people that have been honored there, including uh, uh, today's honoree, which is a, an amazing story. And uh, Coach Carol Phillips here as well, author of 52 Simple Ways to Health, We'll take a quick break. Uh, 148 is our time. Kale and Company continues right here on 1077 The Pulse. 1077 The Pulse. 153 is our time on Kale and Company. Coach Carol Phillips in the house. That's why we have the bright, bouncy music, as always, <laughs> when uh, she's here. And uh, Steve Gamlin. And uh, he is the motivational firewood guy. And uh, you can see his uh, Facebook page, uh, Beach Bum Philanthropy. And where else are you, Steve? You can find me online at motivationalfirewood.com. Okay. And that's where pretty much everything else is. Ah, all okay. the stuff that I'm up to these days. And trying to keep it all positive across the board. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Speaker, author, learning program creator. Um, and if for those of you out there who love vision boards, check out Steve's website because he is a master at creating vision boards. He does a lot of corporate work. So any companies out there, you want to have a great um, activity for your employees. You know, if you did an employee appreciation day and you want to be doing some vision boards, well, Steve's your guy. Um, so his number is 877-560-3360. And in the few minutes that we have left, Steve, tell us about um, your get out of jail free card. <laughs> <laughs> I am notoriously late for everything. Um, not so much for, for radio shows, but for coming home one time 
And I would, I always tell my wife, Tina, I'll be home by six. And just the eye roll, she's a, an Olympic gold medal eye roll. And one day I had promised her, I said, I will be home by six. I promise. She says, well, you better be because you have to stop at Hannaford and get this item that we need to, to cook dinner. So I strolled into Hannaford at 10 minutes to seven and <laughs> did not have my phone on because I knew the text would be coming. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm doing a very bad thing here. I'm late. I'm almost an hour late already, and I have to get this item. And I just said to myself, if there's anyone behind me in the 12 items or less aisle, I don't care what they've got. I'm paying for their groceries. And I got my two little items. I got there. I paid for it. There was nobody behind me. I turned for something, turned back, and I saw this this older gentleman coming up towards the register. And I said, wonderful, you know. He's, he's here. I'm going to pay for his groceries. He looks like he only has a couple things in his basket. And I turned away to grab my bag and turn back, and he was gone. Oh. And I thought, well, okay, next time. And I turned again, and he was back. And he just had two little items. And I said, sir, would you do me a huge favor? And by the way, this is how you ask people if, to pay for their groceries. So my family, friends, and I have to do an act of kindness every day because whoever doesn't has to wash dishes. I hate washing dishes. <laughs> Would you do me a great favor and let me pay for those two items? And he looked at me funny and I said, you don't have a lobster in that basket, right? He goes, no, son, I don't. I said, well, good. It was $2.97. And then he held out his hand and, and he looked very emotional. And he said, thank you. Uh, I lost my wife two weeks ago and she used to do all the groceries and I'm feeling a bit lost. Mm. And all I could think of was his wife, you know, wherever she is, looking down, tapping him on the shoulder and say, honey, go back over here because this weird guy <laughs> wants to pay for your groceries. <laughs> it was $2.97 and I'll never forget it. But that's, that's a great way to approach people if you want to take care of their stuff. Would you would you do me a favor? Would you let me do right, this? Right, right. Because, because I, people have their pride too. Uh, I, I, I took a wrecking ball to somebody's pride once by mistake, and I'll never do it again. I looked right at them and said, I want to pay for your stuff. And you could tell by their clothing, they were struggling a bit in life. Mm. And as soon as I said that, I saw mm. all the pride drain from their face, and I almost bawled right there. Wow. I felt so bad. Well, here's another way to do it, too. So, you know, you don't have to, you know, worry about offending mm. anybody is, I'll go through the register and I'll buy, say, a $10 gift card. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done, I give it back to the cashier and I'll say, you know, the next person who comes in line with kids, yeah. give it to them or whatever. So I don't even see them. Yeah. And it's it's meant for them. Yeah. So. I did that once at a coffee shop, got a $20 gift card, slid it back to who turned out to be the manager running the <laughs> register. And I slid it back. I said, do me a favor. Just let this ride. I'm going to sit over there because I just want to see reactions. But don't point at me. Don't look at me. Nothing. And there were two lines of people, and the first was uh, looked to be a young mom had just gotten off her nursing shift, and she was still in her scrubs, and she turned around with a big smile. And then there was this little guy who went to the coffee shop with all his buddies. They go to talk sports and politics every day. He turns around, his little fire plug of a guy. He yells to the other line, "Hey, Charlie, you got in the wrong line. Someone bought my coffee." Ah! <laughs> and I am roaring. Over in the corner of the coffee shop, and I just thought that was the funniest thing. Isn't that something? It's I, amazing to watch. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, those random acts of kindness yes. will never be forgotten by right. by the recipients. Right. Uh, that that is for sure. They yep. will always remember that. Yep. Yeah, and it makes people happy. It brings people together. And <clears throat> oh, well, Steve, this just has been an awesome hour. It, I knew you. it was going to fly by. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me here. This has been wonderful. You're welcome. So if you want to check out Steve's website, it's motivationalfirewood.com. His number is 877-560-3360. Or check out his Beach Bum Philanthropy page on Facebook. And Steve, if you ever want to get back into radio, I'm, I'm sure we could find a few hours for you here, here, here and there. You know, <laughs> I just I just go down to the basement right now, yeah. and I, all I have to do if if I'm videotaping it is just look nice from the waist up. So I'm good. <laughs> see, see, I don't even have to worry about that. You know, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But, Steve, thanks so much, and uh, thanks for uh, all that you do, and hope you have a great uh, holiday season. You as well. Thanks so much. And, uh, Coach Carroll, same goes for you, and uh, we will see you again in the uh, not-too-distant future. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. We look forward to seeing you again real soon, Coach Carroll.